Yo, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to another training commentary and today we're going to start things off a little differently. So today I'm going to be eating my pre-workout meal which is pretty much just Greek yogurt and protein powder mixed together. Um, I check my phone to check out the bus time to get to the gym. It's late workout, 7.35 p.m. Um, today we're hitting shoulders and arms. But before that, I realized I did not have enough carbohydrates in me. And so I'm trying to get in a lot of simple carbohydrates so that I have a little bit more energy and I don't feel like I'm losing the pump during the workout. Big bites only, gotta get going. Now we're having this really chunky pre-workout. Have some water with it. And uh, this is a non-stim pre-workout because if I have stims now, I'm not gonna be able to sleep for quite a while. And unlike last year, a couple years ago, I am not sleeping at 5 a.m. anymore. And that's because I wanna prioritize making gains. So I guess we'll start the rip on this about my sleep quality. I decided to change sleeping at 5 a.m. because, well, although I justified doing all my productivity stuff later at night, that would mean that I'd just be a worse version of myself if I were to do it at night versus in the morning. And so I prefer to do things a lot earlier now. For example, right now it's like around 12 p.m., which if you go back to any of my old videos, you'll realize that I wasn't even up by this time. I'd be probably up by like four or 5 p.m. But aside from productivity, I just feel physically better because my scheduling is a lot more precise in what I do. And it's not more like, oh, did I get this done? Let's prolong being up because I didn't get things done because I was procrastinating. And so having a fixed bed time schedule or around a fixed bedtime schedule not exact but you know you know what I mean like not going to bed before like 4 a.m will get your life a little bit more organized and so yeah highly recommend it so moving on what I'm doing with this bench is I'm securing it because when I uh, shoulder press which is the goal might look like a inclined bench press but when I shoulder press on this movement I feel my back sometimes sliding down and so this band kind of secures things at least has a little bit more grip on my back so when I'm shoulder pressing um, I won't need as much leg drive to push my back upright against the bench. Um, so it's pretty good, highly recommend doing that. So this is a non-compound shoulder day, meaning I'm not bench pressing before training shoulders. This is my first set with 70s. I realized I also wasn't going incredibly low with my dumbbell range of motion, which is the main advantage of recording yourself when working out is that you get to micro pick everything that went wrong in the previous set to try to make yourself better in the following set. So actually I got some good news about the program if you're waiting for it. It is finished. I'm going to release it very soon on my Instagram. I go into depth about a topic where I call heavy sets in which you pretty much ignore the tempos. Now I want to be very clear, I'm not saying like ignore the tempos like you have the sloppiest form, I'm just saying you ignore like instead of like three second tempos, you'll do like a 0.5 or one second tempo in which the reps aren't exactly uniform from the first rep to the second rep because realistically as you get um, more fatigue during a set, like it's gonna be a lot more difficult to control the tempo. So like the first couple of reps might be perfect tempo. And then after the last couple of reps might be a little bit quicker because you might be a little bit more fatigued, which if you do have quicker reps, that means it's probably easier reps. And so there's two reasons why I would prefer doing so. And that's because number one, if you do one heavy set, that will result in a lot of mechanical damage, a lot of fatigue in the muscle group that you're hitting. So that if you drop down to a lighter weight, it'll be a lot easier to control and settle with a more uniform tempo rep scheme rep to rep now granted i don't think you should do heavy sets on something like a isolation movement i like using these heavy sets more so for exercises where you have difficulty feeling it maybe you could do it on a single joint movement if you feel like it's very difficult to target that muscle group because as you get stronger you'll realize that having pretty form sometimes results in a lot of leftover gains on the table because you're so focused on sticking with what is most commonly preached for beginners pretty structured technique like perfect tempo Tempos, but once you start to get fatigued and you feel like you're about to stop, not because of the muscle burning up, but because you're struggling to actually just do the tempos, then it's appropriate to get sloppy with it. But once you do get sloppy with it, definitely next set, don't be lifting the same weight and expect the following set to be as good as that set because realistically, if you're emptying the gas tank near the end of your set, you're probably gonna be significantly weaker. And so with these heavy sets, definitely pace yourself to doing one or two and then have some back down sets. So with shoulders, I like to get a lot of my pressing movements out of the way because I feel like they're the most taxing movements. I'll start with a free weight movement, then proceed to a guided machine. This machine in particular, the Techno Gym uh, shoulder press is pretty awesome. I like it a lot, but you have many options. You can also do the plate loaded version of this. I like this because I'm pretty lazy and you can just pull the pin, put out the heaviest amount of weight that you want to go to 
control the reps again you don't need to go heavy every single set now it's on to the best movement the dumbbell lateral raise this is definitely the movement i look forward towards the most my shoulder days sometimes i go pretty heavy on this but today i wasn't really feeling it so i stuck to 40s and try to keep a lot of tension on the side delts while doing this movement so i'm going to be honest i'm probably off with precision on how many reps i'm doing i just know that i'm doing at least 12 10 to 12 um, maybe even 15 at sometimes but for high rep stuff so i'm feeling pretty good and the load's not entirely heavy i still keep on going just because i get zoned in so much that i don't really care about the reps i just care about pushing myself and having the training intent and that's why i'm looking like i'm taking a massive dump or look like a crazy man is because i'm pushing pretty damn hard I'll admit, after pushing a really hard lateral raise, it's hard to have the same effort or intensity with the following exercises. And so rear delts, I won't kill them like I'll kill my lateral delts, I'll kill my rear delts on my pull day, but doing some sort of volume is better than neglecting them the whole entire session. So I like to hit them with this chest supported rear delt row. Feels great, looks absolutely silly. And so now this is the time that that dessert tofu that I ate earlier in this video is starting to kick in, because if I didn't eat enough, which I didn't in the past, by the time I got to this point in my workout, I would start to give out a little bit and I would probably think about going home because my body's so worn out already. So it's very important to eat a lot before going to the gym. Now not eat like a lot of food before training, I mean like eat more throughout the day so you have a bit more fuel to work out during your sessions. Um, also important not to eat too much because if you eat too much obviously you're gonna feel like puking you won't be able to focus. Now I like to finish off my delts with some cable work. I don't go heavy at all on these reps. I'm mostly fighting for the hard isometric holds at, at pretty much the mid portion to top portion of the rep you can get pretty decent length in position if you do the egyptian lateral raise version but the problem is like you're supporting your body weight with one arm so it might tire out just push your reps pretty damn hard if you want to grow because if you're not pushing like this it's going to be hard to see changes in your physique if you're not reaching untouched territories if you're doing the same day in day out and so actually acknowledging how my training has changed from powerlifting power building to bodybuilding with powerlifting you definitely don't want to push your accessories to pure failure because training like this day in day out like a bodybuilder your brain is going to feel like mashed potatoes after a while as much physical as this is it definitely taxes you a lot mentally I always feel like passing out after working out this hard. Now as a power builder, there's like an in-between. I would say it's probably around RP 9 to 10. We're sure you do go to failure feeling great in that exercise, but not all sets are to be taken to failure. And believe it or not, you can still make gains like that for both powerlifting and bodybuilding goals. But because your focus is power building, you have to be very considerate of your recovery if you're not feeling great don't push it as much as fatigue is for squat bench deadlift if you're fatigued or in a state of fatigue and you go kill yourself on the isolation slash accessory movements you're still not giving your body enough recovery to make progress this is why i'm such a massive advocate of having different phases of training like a size slash bodybuilding hypertrophy training style versus a powerlifting block where you could allocate less time to accessories, less energy to accessories, but you still do them to get some size gain. So you can reach forward to different aspirations with both strength and hypertrophy gains. But now flipping the page to bodybuilding training, your isolation slash accessory movements, that's your bread and butter. That's where every single rep does matter in a sense of grindiness. I think a couple bodybuilders like Arnold say that the set only starts once you start getting close to failure. And so when you take that mentality, every single rep has training intent with each accessory slash isolation movement. It's also a lot more difficult to push to that level of training on a compound movement versus a isolation movement. And that's why you see it more common that bodybuilders are grunting, huffing and puffing on like machine and cable stuff is because one, it's easier, and two, what's gonna give out first is not gonna be a stability factor, but something related to the muscle that you're actually training. And so there's a lot of contrast with powerlifting and bodybuilding training. And realistically, it's impossible to be the best at both with one style training. The longer you are powerlifting, the more specialized you'll have to get with your training, the more conservative, if you truly wanna be the best powerlifter that you can be. And that's why a lot of powerlifters train like babies after their squat bench deadlift, is because they're being conservative to their CNS, their fatigue, because a lot of them are training pretty frequent, like four or five times a week with squat, bench, and deadlift. Okay, maybe not deadlift, but at least for the squat and bench. I apologize if I went on a tangent and went completely off topic of this video, but I am training arms, as you can clearly see. I do a lot of reps on these cables, but more importantly, I get to a state where everything gets grindy, meaning very slow reps, still trying to control the weight, but essentially the eccentric portion or concentric portion of the movement somewhat becomes an isometric hold because of how slow the rep turns into. The cables are absolutely necessary to getting big jacked arms. So we are getting near the end of this workout. 
Not all workouts do I stay the course of the plan. I will have a backbone of what I need to hit, but if I'm feeling great, then it's not uncommon. They'll just throw in a little bit more accessory movements or training movements at the end of the workout. It won't do any harm. And so that's why after doing all those cables, I'm doing hammer curls right now. It's not really part of the plan. Now let's move on from this topic. Am I done with powerlifting? I'm not done with powerlifting. I'm actually going to compete in provincials in about six weeks. I'm not sure how training is going, but my goal is to hit something pretty crazy. And if provincials goes well, then doing nationals. In that regard, my physique's gonna have to take a hit because I have to lose about eight pounds. My body weight's around 212, and you will see a physique update near the end. And lastly, I want to say thank you to everyone that has supported me by using my code JUSTLEE at YoungLA. I really hope you guys are going to enjoy this program drop in the near future. It's a 15-page document. I spent a lot of time writing it. Hope you guys will enjoy. Watch this montage of me flexing without my shirt. Peace out.